Hey, welcome to Radiologist Headquarters. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and I'm going to give you five cases in about five minutes. For each unknown case, I'll show each slide for about 10 seconds. At that point, you can pause and examine the images further if you'd like. Then I'll review the findings, reveal the diagnosis, and we'll move on to the next case. We only have five minutes, so let's go. Case one, slide one of one, history of sepsis. Okay, so we're looking at sagittal and transverse images of the gallbladder, and notice how echogenic the gallbladder wall is. So you might initially think, is this calcification of the gallbladder wall? Is this porcelain gallbladder? Well, with calcification, we should have very dark poster acoustic shadowing, and instead here we have this hazy, dirty shadowing, an artifact characteristic of gas within the wall of the gallbladder. The patient also had a CT scan of the abdomen, and you can see that there is indeed gas in the wall of the gallbladder on this axial image. We can also see it on this coronal image and here on the sagittal image. So whenever you have gas in the gallbladder wall, that's diagnostic of emphysematous cholecystitis. And these zoomed-in coronal and sagittally formatted images of the CT scan show how lung windows can help to bring out the gas within the gallbladder wall very nicely here in this case. We also have some gas in the lumen, but that's not specific for the diagnosis of emphysematous cholecystitis. You can have that in a setting of pneumobilia. So emphysematous cholecystitis is typically a surgical emergency, given that there is a high mortality rate, up to 25% due to the risk of gangrene, perforation, and development of sepsis if it's untreated. And the treatment is typically cholecystectomy. Patients who are poor surgical candidates may first have a cholecystostomy, which is what this patient had. All right, next case, history of pelvic pain. Slide one of one. So we're looking at a large mass in the right ovary, and it has characteristic homogeneous diffuse low-level echoes throughout it. There's also a thin septation, but we don't see any abnormal vascularity. You don't see a mural nodule or any areas of suspicious blood flow. And this is typical for an endometrioma. And these patients often have a history of dysmenorrhea, pain. They may have infertility, and the symptoms are often cyclical. They can be treated either with hormonal therapy or resection. There is a very low rate of malignant transformation, about 1%. Just a few mimics to be aware of, sometimes mucinous tumors of the ovary, such as a borderline epithelial tumor, which is a low-grade neoplasm, can have echoes in it, but those tend to be scattered low-level echoes as opposed to homogeneous and diffuse echoes. Also, fluid-dominant teratomas can sometimes mimic endometriomas. And if there's ever a question, MRI may be obtained because that modality has very high specificity in the diagnosis of endometriosis. Next case, Cineclip. Patient was referred with a history of gallbladder mass. Slide one of two. Slide two of two, some static images. Okay, so looking at this cine clip, you do see this mass. It does look a little suspicious. It's complex, cystic, and solid, but then notice how the gallbladder lumen invaginates into it. And also notice how the heaped up mucosa leads into it, and you have all these peripheral cystic spaces. Now, these static and transverse images here, again, show how these cystic areas are all at the periphery of this mass-like lesion. There's also no increased vascularity here, no abnormal color Doppler flow. And it almost looks like this mass-like cystic area is sitting outside of the gallbladder. I like to think of it as a polycystic ovary on the gallbladder. And this is characteristic of fundal adenomyomatosis. Now, you may be thinking, hey, wait a minute, Dr. Koval, you need common tail artifact to diagnose adenomyomatosis. Well, sometimes you can diagnose it without the artifact because adenomyomatosis is actually mucosal thickening and herniation into the gallbladder wall, which causes these little cystic areas to develop, known as, yes, rokitansky ashoff sinuses. And then secondarily, cholesterol crystals can deposit into the sinuses, and that's what will cause the characteristic common tail artifact that we look for in adenomyomatosis. Now, the patient also had an MRI, which does have increased sensitivity in this diagnosis, but you see the same findings, essentially. These multiple little cystic areas causing a string of pearls appearance on these fluid-sensitive sequences. And notice again how you see the gallbladder lumen invaginate into this fundal adenomyomatosis. We do have some mucosal thickening and, and enhancement here, but not mass-like thickening. So this is a benign diagnosis. It does not require surgery. Okay, next case, slide one of one. So we're looking at both the right and left kidney, and notice how there are these confluent echogenic triangular-shaped areas scattered throughout the region of the medullary pyramids, and it's bilateral, so it's a systemic process. And this is typical for medullary nephrocalcinosis. 
So medullary nephrocalcinosis refers to calcium salts depositing in the medullary pyramid. And what's the most common cause? Yes, hyperparathyroidism. That's about 40%. Actually, anything that causes hypercalcemia can lead to this appearance. This patient had medullary sponge kidney, which is a form of renal tubular ectasia in which tiny calculi deposit in these dilated tubules. Another cause of medullary nephrocalcinosis is renal tubular acidosis, and that's the type 1 distal type, which is a familial form. Okay, last case. History of right upper quadrant pain, slide 1 of 1. So multiple images of the liver here, and there are these vague little punctate areas of cometal reverberation artifacts scattered throughout the liver. So this is cometal artifact, but it's not in the gallbladder, which looks normal here. So this is not adenomyomatosis. But what can cause this in the liver? Well, if you look closely, it's difficult to see, but there are these little anechoic foci just interior to these areas of artifact. So scattered areas of cometal artifact throughout the liver parenchyma, that's typical for biliary hematomas. So these are actually benign. They're little malformations of the biliary tract that are asymptomatic. They don't require any treatment. So that history of right upper quadrant pain I gave you earlier, that was a distractor. <laughs> So these are also known as von Meyenberg complexes. And on ultrasound, because the liver is actually filled with these little cystic areas, it can have a heterogeneous and coarse appearance to the liver ecrotexture. But this cometal appearance is fairly characteristic. And MRI will typically show these lesions with greater detail and number. You can see that the liver is just filled with these tiny little T2 bright cystic areas on this thick slab 3D MRCP sequence. Here's the gallbladder here, as well as the extrahepatic bile duct and pancreatic duct. Okay, that's it for five cases in five minutes, ultrasound number five. If you enjoyed this lecture, you can subscribe to Radiologist Headquarters on Apple Podcasts and YouTube, and you can leave a review or a comment while you're there. Visit us at radiologisthq.com for additional info and to follow us on social media. Thanks and have a great day.